Welcome to another video. So, I recently covered small agents, which were pretty good and simple to use, but they couldn't control a browser and do stuff like a human would, similar to Claude's computer use. But today, I have one such AI agent that can control a whole web browser and do whatever you ask it to do. This AI agent is called MidScene.js. MidScene is an open source JavaScript library, and it is supposed to be an AI powered automation SDK that can control the page, perform assertions, and extract data in JSON format using natural language. If you remember browser use, then it's quite similar to that. It can do natural language interaction, which means that all you need to give it is the task and let MidScene plan and control the user interface for you. It can also understand UI and answer in JSON. So, this is pretty handy, as it allows you to give it a JSON format that you want along with your prompt, and it can navigate through a page, extract that information, and give back structured responses to you, which is good. So, this is a really good thing as well. It can also do intuitive assertion as well. One of the good parts about it is that it also has a Chrome extension, which means that you can easily plug that in and make it work easily that way. It also has support for all types of LLMs as well. Now let me tell you how you can use it and how it all works. But before we do that, let me tell you about today's sponsor, Photogenius AI. Photogenius AI is an all-in-one AI-powered art generator that allows you to type anything and get stunning visuals instantly. Photogenius AI gives you all kinds of image generation models in one place, whether it be Flux, Stable Diffusion, Kardinsky, or any image generator model that you can think of. Not just that, it also gives you the option to do advanced AI image editing as well, with their cool AI tools like an AI avatar generator, background removal, logo generator, emoji generator, or even add an app icon generator. And the best part is that it starts at only $10, and you can get an additional 25% off these already great deals by using my coupon code KING25. So, Make sure that you check out photogenius.ai through the link in the description and generate some cool stuff with it. Now, if we talk about how you can use it, then there are two options. You can either use it via a Chrome extension that they have, or you can also use the YAML file to use it and then run it and use it. Most of you would like to use the Chrome extension, so I'll talk about that first and then I'll move to how you can also use it with YAML files. Now, to install the Chrome extension, just go to the Google Chrome extension marketplace and search for MidScene.js and get it installed. Once done, you'll see the MidScene thing in your browser. Now, we'll need to get it configured as well. I'll be using the Gemini 2.0 Flash model because it's free and performs really well. So, to do that, you'll need to first navigate to this model and provider page in here, and then you can see all kinds of model settings that you can use. Here's the Gemini one. So, just copy this and paste it in by clicking this option and pasting it here. Now, change the model name to Gemini 2.0 Flash Exp, and then enter the API key. Once you have done that, we can start using it. Now, you can see that this is the interface, and it's quite simple. Here, you have the options of Action, Query, and Assert. The Action option will take in what your prompt is, and it will run actions like clicking and writing, and stuff like that to perform just what you want. Apart from this, you have Query, which is basically like Action, but it can also extract any kind of data you want from those actions as well. So, you can ask it to get the NVIDIA stock price, and it can give you the answer in textual format. 
There's also assertion. Assertion, from what I understand, is mainly for testing. So, it can basically see the page, and you can ask it to make sure that a button's color is red, or that a button is working, and it can do that and give you a pass element in true or false. This is mainly for testing the UIs and stuff that you make. Now, let me show you how the action thing works. So, one thing that you need to keep in mind is that it can only work on the website that you already have open. It can navigate through here, but it can't directly open another page. So, it's better to start it with something like Google. Anyway, let's ask it to search for AI Code King and hit enter. Let's send it. Once we do that, you can see that it starts working on it. Let's wait a bit. You can see that it first writes it into the search text box. And if we wait a bit more, then you can see that it hits the search button. Now, it has done what we asked it to do, and it has the stuff we wanted. So that's great. Now, let's also try something else, which is to ask it for the NVIDIA stock price. Once we send it, you can see that it starts searching for it. Also, when it does the stuff, you'll see the mid-scene debugging thing at the top as well. Anyway, if we wait a bit, then you can see that it's now done which is great, and it worked fine as well. Now, let's say that we want to scrape this and get a good JSON structure out of it based on our prompt. Well, then we can just go to the query thing, and here you can ask it to give you the stock price. Once we type it in and send it, you'll see that it analyzes the page, and now we have the answer here in a structured format. Now, this is just a basic thing. If you have a longer or bigger page, then you can easily just ask it to make it structured, and it can do it very easily, which is great and insane to think about. Let's try it with something else as well. I have Google Flights open here, and I want it to search for flights between New York and Chicago on the 10th of January. Let's send it. Once we do it, you can see that it starts doing that. Let's wait a bit. And it's now done. So, it did this pretty well, which is just amazing. So, it works pretty well and great. So, that's basically how it works. But some of you may also want to use it in more complex settings as well. Well, in that case, you can use the YAML configuration. So, you can make YAML files like this. Or you can enter the target URL task, and everything quite simply, which is similar to the settings that you encounter in the extension. Then, you can install the mid-scene npx package, export the same API keys as you did for the extension, and just run the WayML file like this with the mid-scene CLI tool. Once you do that, it will open up Chrome in debugging mode and start using it. It's really good as well. So, that's basically how it works. I think that this is pretty great to use, and it's a great AI agent, similar to browser use, and it works pretty well with all kinds of LLMs that you want to use. It's also great for end consumers who just want to use it quite easily with something like the Chrome extension. So, that's great. I think that this works well and could be used easily in UI testing as well as for doing repetitive tasks, and it is surely on par with Claude's computer use. Overall, it's pretty cool. Anyway, share your thoughts below and subscribe to the channel. You can also donate via Super Thanks option or join the channel as well and get some perks. I'll see you in the next video. Bye!